Hello, my name is August. Mr. Haas is not here today, so I am going to take over lecture. I was very nervous. But I now understand everything about the brain, and I'm going to teach you today. Hello. Let's start with the diencephalon, which is found right up here. My accent changes from now and time and time again, but that's okay, because I'm August and I'm a cool dude. Alright, August, I'm back. I'm back, August. You go on your way. You're very muscular, by the way. I can appreciate that. You might rival me in uh, my video. Maybe we'll put you in the video next time. All right, let's see if I can adjust the camera here. It looks like it's looking at me. I'm hoping it's right. Uh, first off, diencephalon. Uh, diencephalon sits right on top of the brain stem. It's a region that is made up of the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and the epithalamus. Okay, here we'll take a look at the diencephalon. You can see in this region. Okay, uh, here we have the hypothalamus. Uh, you see just above the pituitary gland, which is not part of the diencephalon. And then we also have the, um, the epithalamus up here, which makes up uh, the pineal gland, um, makes up part of the epithalamus, and then also the, uh, which that's kind of the only thing shown here, so it's a little hard to visualize, but epithalamus is on top, and then the thalamus itself is in the middle between those two, and it uh, actually enwraps or encloses the um, the third ventricle, the third ventricle being a, a ventricle. So the thalamus itself uh, is a relay station for almost all of the sensory impulses. So as they come up through the sensory neurons, they all go through the, thal the thalamus, and the thalamus is the conductor that tells them where to go, um, to the correct part of the cortex specifically. The hypothalamus itself is of course under the thalamus, hence the term hypo, and this is an autonomic Regulation center, this is the main controller of all of your hormones. Not all, but the main controller of many of those hormones. Partially through the pituitary gland, but they help to regulate body temperature, helps to control water balance, and then it also helps to regulate metabolism through the control of the thyroid gland. Uh, it is also part of the limbic system and it's tied to emotions, as is the amygdala and other regions. Um, and I mentioned already previously that it's uh, right above the pituitary gland and communicates with the pituitary gland to secrete certain hormones. Then the epithalamus, of course, is found on top of the third ventricle. The ventricle is an opening in the brain uh, that aids um, uh, in buoyancy, or buoyancy is the wrong word, but um, uh, com uh, compre uh, minimizes compression or helps the brain uh, soften blows and so on. So the epithalamus makes up the wall, part of the wall of the third ventricle, the top of it. Uh, it also includes the pineal body, uh, the pineal body may, is part of or a side of the epithalamus um, and then it also includes the choroid plexus um, the choroid plexus there's a couple of them that you'll see but it forms the CSF or cerebral spinal fluid that it then secretes into the uh, ventricles themselves um, the brain stem itself now the next uh, just below or just uh, inferior to um, the diencephalon we have uh, the brainstem and attaches to the spinal cord, and these include parts of its um, midbrain, pons, and the medulla oblongata. Now, um, here looking specifically, we'll show you the brainstem. We have the pons, okay? We have the medulla, which is this little uh, out crunch, this uh, bulging. Um, and then, what am I missing? Pons, medulla, oh, midbrain. Uh, midbrain is, is shown here, okay? Made up of the corpora quadrigemina and cerebral aqueduct. Uh, that's the midbrain. Uh, and then also the cerebral peduncle, one of the better words. These all form the midbrain. These all are all part of the brain stem, the part at the top of the spinal cord, if you like. Um, all right, so the midbrain is basically tracts of nerve fibers. So things are passing through here. There are regions of um, cell bodies located within here, so nuclei that are found in here within the midbrain, but mostly they're, they're ascending and descending tracts of uh, nerve fibers taking information different directions. Uh, the cerebral peduncles, these are ascending and descending impulses as we mentioned, and the corporate quadrigemina, these are reflex centers for vision and hearing, so um, as opposed to processing what, they, what are seen in the cortex, these are reflexes such as, for example, 
um, communicating fear when you see something jump at you in a movie. This is going to go through the corporate quadrigemina. That's a reflex when you jump back. The pons itself is mostly uh, mentioned in the control of breathing. It's mostly fiber tracts, but it does have a, um, a, some nuclei in there that control the breathing. These are cell bodies within the white matter. And then you have the medulla oblongata, which gets the most attention of the brain stem. Uh, it merges into the spinal cord, has fiber tracts, and it's the uh, reflex control center. So higher order reflexes such as, oh, my baby fell, uh, I need to decide what to do, that goes up to the cortex. Okay, uh, This is not registered in the medulla. The medulla is the one where you don't control your reflex options, I guess you could say. And instead, uh, these are your autonomic reflexes. So uh, controlling heart rate faster or slower because you're running and blood pressure and how, how quickly are you breathing because I'm going for a run and so on. Swallowing, vomiting, all those autonomic reflexes. Then we have a reticular formation which is part of the brain stem and it's some gray matter in there. Um, and this is motor control of the visceral organs, so the smooth muscles that make up the stomach and the uh, intestines and so on. Those smooth muscles are controlled by the reticular formation. Um, and then it also plays a role in uh, sleep-wake cycles and your perception of consciousness. Uh, is housed in the reticular formation. The reticular formation on its way up um, to the thalamus, it helps to um, eliminate irrelevant stimuli as they pass through there. You ignore them if you can there. So it helps to modulate pain. One of the questions in class in one of the periods was about um, um, pain when you get a limb amputated and you don't feel pain, you're in shock, so to speak. Well, the reticular formation plays a role in that as well as the hyperpolarization that we previously mentioned. Um, and that helps, that's what we mean by modulating pain. And then also habituation. If you feel something over and over and over, you learn to sort of numb that pain in a way or numb that response in general. Uh, that's done by the reticular formation. And you can see that here, the reticular formation here shown in uh, uh, this purplish pinkish color where sig signals are passing up. Here you see the reflex center for uh, visual as well as auditory. And then you also see um, the other general senses. Uh, ascending and then the reticular formation will help to um, eliminate those that are irrelevant uh, and so on. All right, and then the last one is the cerebellum here to talk about. These are two hemispheres in the back. This is the um, the old brain, if you like. It's the uh, cauliflower looking one. And your skeletal muscle coordination is comes from the cerebellum. So this is one of the uh, large areas that's affected by uh, MS, for example. Um, it also controls timing of skeletal muscles and balance and uh, equilibrium. So your ability to coordinate yourself. If you're uncoordinated, well, you might have um, fewer connections in your cerebellum. And the more you work on uh, improving coordination or learning what we call a motor pathway, how to do something with your skeletal muscles, um, you are building and increasing connections in your cerebellum. New cells are communicating with each other. So this is what we mean by learning new skills like typing, dancing, playing an instrument, and so on. Of course, you're not supposed to know how to play an instrument yet. You've never done it. But as you try, it's very difficult. And the more you do it, the more connections you build, and the easier it becomes. And I'm out. Oh, wait. August says bye. Bye-bye. I'll miss you, but maybe I'll see you again soon in another life.